These are the lectures for Math 20 online, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon. Instructor William Hewitt. First section is section 1-1. You can look along with us here on page 4 of your textbook. Starting off with some vocabulary, we have the basic introduction here of just kind of reminding us some common terms. A digit, 0, 1, 2, 3, so when we use the word digits or numbers, that's what we're talking about. Then the difference between whole numbers and natural numbers. Whole numbers start with 0, natural numbers start with 1. Also going to talk about inequalities, less than and greater than, and we'll do that in a few minutes. Our first objective, though, is to write word names from place value names and place value names from word names. So here on the sheet, we have our base 10 number system, and we have everything is done in groups of three. Ones, tens, hundreds, and then in the thousands group, we still repeat ones, tens, hundreds, millions, one, tens, hundreds, as you see the pattern. But when we're reading numbers, we might have four billion, 532 million, 17,303. Again, we say and read numbers in groups of three. So here are the word names, here are the number names. So let's say that we had a number of 8,432. Again, we say 8,000 as we again read groups of three. And then we say the 432. Again, we're reading and saying groups of three. Okay. Next entrance here, or next goal, is to talk about inequalities. As write an inequality statement about two numbers. So an inequality is going to either be a greater than sign or a less than sign. Okay, so this would be greater than or less than. Okay, we would read this as 5 is greater than 3 or 3 is less than 4, okay? So it's, we're reading left to right, and so if we're asked then if to compare two numbers, 18 or 20, we would say 18 is less than 20. And that's going to be true for any size number. See, if we had 120, how is that compared to 121? we would say 120 is less than 121. Or we could also then say 121 is greater than 120. Objective number three, it says round a given whole number. Okay, so we basically we need to first talk about some rounding rules. So if a number is five or greater that we're rounding to, we're going to round up. If it's four or less, we're going to round down. And we round to the nearest 10. So the 10 above and the 10 below. So if we had the number 53, and we're going to round to the nearest 10, we take that number and we use also the number to the right as we're rounding. So we're comparing really 53. Is that gonna be closest to the 10 below, which is 50? Or the 10 above, which is 60? Well, in our rounding rules, if it's the number here that we're really comparing, is that 5 or larger or 4 or less? Well, the 3 is 4 or less, so we're going to round down. So 53 to the nearest 10 is going to round to 50. The same is true if we have, say, 143, and we're going to round to the nearest 10. Again, we're going to compare the 4 and the number to the right, as we just talked about, 3 is less, so it's going to round down. So it's going to round to the next 10, which is 10 below. So 43 is going to round to 40. Everything in front stays the same, so we still have the 100 there. Everything behind goes to 0. Notice that it's a 0 here instead of the 3, because we're rounding to the nearest 10, either the 50 or the 60. Okay, so 143 rounded to the nearest 10 is 140. Let's extend this a little bit. Let's say that we have a 1,247, and we're going to round that to the nearest 100 this time. Okay, again, our rules 
we're going to look at the number that we're rounding to. Here's the 100 number. And we're going to take that number and the number behind it. So we're really looking at 24. So is that closer than 20 or 30? Well, again, our rules, 4 is going to round down. So we're going to be closer to the 20. Everything to the left stays the same. Everything to right goes to zeros. And it's the right of the number we're looking at. So we're looking at the hundreds, so everything to the right is going to zeros, and our decimal, of course, is at the end of a number. We don't have to write it, it's just there. So now, 1,247 rounded to the nearest hundred is going to be 1,200. Our last goal for this unit is to read tables. And on page 9 of our textbook, if you'd like to follow along, is they give you a table of course enrollment. They're asking to you to how many mathematics students are in the freshman class. Well, we would see that there are 950 there. Okay, so they're just asking you to look at the information and to read the table. And we'll do some more of that in our homework help. So let's turn to page to our exercise one for our homework. And let's take a look at what they're asking you to do as you're practicing these skills. Problem number one, is a hundred, or excuse me, 843. So we have 843, and they're asking you to round, excuse me, they're asking you to just read those numbers. So we would then write this out at 800, excuse my writing there, 40, Okay? So they just say the number, write it, just as you would be writing out a check. Problem number two, 196. So we would write 196. Okay? Say the number, write the number. When we drop down to say problem number seven, this is problem number one, problem number two for comparison. Problem number seven then, they're going to reverse that. They're giving you the name and they're asking you to write the number. Well, 87, so we would then write 87. Number nine is 9,500. So we would write 9,000, because as we're counting over here, we have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, thousands. So we have the nine has to go into the thousand spot there. 500, so we have five in the hundred spot. There's no twenties or tens, and there's no ones. Okay, so we just fill out those spots for the various place values, okay? As we're continuing down the assignments and the homework, the numbers are just simply getting bigger. So if we have 27,680 for problem number 13, we would then just write our words 27,000, just like you would a check, 680. Okay, so just simply look at the numbers, find the value, write the words in these sections. Objective number two, starting with problem number 25, they're asking us to write an inequality statement about the two numbers. The example there is 12 and 22. Well, if we're again, we're reading left to right, how does 12 compare to 22 using less thans and greater thans? Okay, so 12 is indeed less than 22, so we would fill in the inequality sign. Number 26, right next to it, and they're asking us to compare 53 and 49. 53 is greater, as we're reading left to right, than 49, and that's what they're asking us to fill in. Down on the bottom, problem number 33. 
They're giving us 400, excuse me, 742, and they're asking you to round that to the nearest 10 spot. Well, we're looking at place value. The digit 4 is in the 10 spot, so we're comparing this number and the one to the right. So we're comparing 42. Is that closer to 40 or 50? Or we're comparing 2. Is that going to round up or down? And it's down. So 42 is closer to 40 than 50. And then again, everything in front is going to stay the same. So the 7 just simply gets added there. And that's our number. 742 is rounded to 740. Problem number 35, for an example. We have 2,655, and they're rounding to the nearest 100. So 6 is in the 100 spot. We're taking that value and the value to the right. So we're looking at 65. We're really comparing this number here. Is that going to round up or down? 5 rounds up. So 65 is going to round to 70. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind goes to zeros. And 2655 rounded to the nearest hundred becomes 2700. Okay, let's take a look at problem number 37. I'm going to give us a new sheet here. Problem number 37, they're giving us the number of six. 107,546. They're asking us to round it to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, the nearest 1,000, and the nearest 10,000. Okay, the same number. So, let's round this to the nearest 10 to start with. Well, 4 is in the 10 spot. We're going to round that one and the one to the right. So, 46 will round to 50, the 6 rounds up, everything in front stays the same, everything behind goes to 0. So this is rounded to the nearest 10. Okay, again we're rounding this number, so we're looking at the original number each time. This time we're rounding it to the nearest 100. Okay, 5 is in the 100 spot. 5 and the number behind are the numbers we're looking at always, remember. So 54, that rounds down, that's four rounds down. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind goes to zeros. So that's this number rounded to the nearest hundred. Okay, the same thing. Well, this time we're rounding to the nearest thousand. Seven is in the digit in the thousand spot. We're taking this one, the one behind. So we're looking at 75, five rounds up. That becomes 80. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind goes to zeros. And it rounds to 608,000. Rounded to the nearest thousand spot. Okay? Again, we're going to take the original number. We're going to round to the nearest 10,000 spot, which is right here. And that's a zero in that spot. But again, we're looking at that one and the one behind. 07, is that closer to zero or 10? Well, in. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind goes to zeros. Okay. And last but not least, they're asking you to read in problem number 46, reading the chart there. Problem number 46 says, which city in the table has essentially no change in the number of homelets? And as we're looking through the data, we see that Atlanta has 68.32 and 05 and 68.40 and 07. And so these questions here on the homework are simply going to ask you to interpret or read numbers out of the table. Good luck!